you guys, the word on my heart. So this is the thing that happens to me. When I'm listening to Upmo teach, I don't know who I was I telling, Pastor Solomon, that I can hear seven sermons in one sermon, eh? like the t- teaching he taught on Sunday. I was like, those are like nine teachings. A teaching series for two months, he preaches it in. So for me, when you're teaching, I can be writing a new sermon after one sentence. Then I write quickly, quickly so I go to the next. I'm like, that's a whole sermon. That's a whole sermon. That's a whole sermon. Like one sentence, a sermon. One sentence, a sermon. So what I'm going to teach, I'm going to first say some statements that he said on Sunday. And it's a year of fruitfulness. Say, my, my heart is open. My ears are open. This word is mine. And it will bear fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to make statements, and I'm I'm not going to qualify them. I'll make them. You catch what you catch. eh? A gift given does not help anyone, but rather a gift received. Doesn't that make sense? Yeah. If I give you a gift and you don't receive it, it equals zero. Doesn't benefit you. Just because you can't see it does not mean it, don't assume it's not there. Do you remember that statement? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You move at the pace of your revelation. Therefore, revelation equals access. I tell you today you have to be tuned in because uh, eventually I'm going to be like, we gotta go. The moment you see it, you move into it. Say, I'll be there. The moment you see it, you move into it. The things you haven't moved into, you have not seen. And I'm going to show you a way to see that maybe you don't know that is the way to see. Then he said, you can only live from what you know. What has been revealed is what you can live in. If you knew what your spirit knows, you would live very differently. That was a statement he made. If you knew what your spirit knew, you would live very differently. And God is calling us to a year of fruitfulness in the things he has prepared for us. Those things are in seed form. They are known to our spirit and we, they are there for us to, to access them. The gift is given for you. It's not given so that you don't access it. Ah. Wow, 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 wow. Did you know that there are languages that are useless to you? Not useless to you, but like they can't help you. Holy Spirit, you're going to help me. I'm your child. I am your daughter going to help me. So it is a year of what? Fruitfulness. Now the seed is the word of God. Hmm? Are we together? The word of God is spirit. So it is your spirit that it, when the word of God comes into you, it's spirit speaking to spirit. Therefore, it produces spiritual results, unusual, strange results. Hmm? So if I had a big garden, big, I want you to imagine the biggest garden in your head right now. Hopefully, it's acres and acres. Just see the field. You see a field. It's tilled. They've removed all the things. It's right there. Are you seeing that seed, that field? And you went in with three seeds of maize. Three like this. And you plant them. How much harvest is going to come? But the field is big. And the soil is good. And you mulch and fertilize. When you plant three seeds, how much harvest will you get? Three harvest. You are the ones who have said that. So now the question is, what determines your capacity of harvest? Is it just seed? Is that the answer? How much seed? The amount of seed matters. 
if the ground is dominated by weeds. You listen to one sermon on Sunday when the preacher is preaching. But you want the results of the preacher who listens to five sermons a day. I've started it. I've not even started it. Okay, now you guys. I'm talking about a hidden key for fruitfulness. By the way, we have a seat belt. Here is the thing. The things I'm going to tell you, they are so simple. You know them. But it's okay. God is going to open our eyes today to something extra. Genesis 8.22. Let's go. Let's go together. While the earth remains. Is the earth remaining right now? If you're on earth, can you put your hand up to confirm? Okay, we are all on the earth. At least we are clear. So the earth is remaining. Whatever is there going to talk about concerns us. While the earth remains, uh what will happen? Seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not... Uh Uh-oh. Let me ask you. You see, we understand day and night. How many of you this morning prayed so that night may come? Because you're really not sure if it will come. When you go to bed at night, how many of you be like, huh? Why will it ever be morning? How many of you have plans for tomorrow morning? Because you're sure it's coming. The same way you're sure of day and night. The same way you're sure that tomorrow is coming, you start to plan because as long as there is a day, there is a night. As long as there is a night, there is a day. As long as there is a seed, there is a harvest. As long as there is a seed, there is a harvest. You don't have to pray about it. You don't have to cry about it. You don't have to wonder if it will be. It shall not cease. The way you think about day and night, the fact that it's so obvious, it is so obvious. Seed time and harvest is as obvious as day and night. I told you that things are simple. There is no shortcut to fruitfulness. Just like there is no shortcut to day and night. How many of you, for you, your, your day lasts three hours, then night comes. You determine, like you're like, Mm-mm, night has come, now day is here. Some people are like, it depends. <laughs> I cross the curtains and I have a night. No. You cannot change that law of day and night. At a certain point, night comes. At a certain point, the sun comes out and day begins. Even when the sun doesn't become bright, light comes and the day is announced. Even the, if you have chickens around you, they start to announce the morning. As sure as day and night ah, that's how seed time and harvest are. This is a law that I believe God wants us to receive deep in our spirit man and in our soul to understand that this thing, guys, we cannot beat the system. The way you can't make night come in the middle of the day. The way you can't make day come in the middle of the night. The harvest can't come before a seed. The harvest can't come before a seed. And also the harvest can't you can't have a bigger, a, a bigger harvest than compared to them. Like, it's bigger, but it has to be in proportion to the seed planted. You're already getting it. To have the results of Jesus, we must first plant the Jesus kind of seed, who by the age of 12 knew the scriptures. That's why he had the harvest we desire. We control the seed and therefore we control the amount of harvest. Now let's go to Mark 4, which Pastor Angela was in yesterday. Mark 4 from verse 13. Read with me. And he said to them, do you not understand this parable, the one she read yesterday? Hopefully you were here. If you are not, you go and listen. How then will you understand all the what? In other words, if you don't understand the principle of the seed of the word of God, you ca- the whole Bible will be closed to you to a certain level. There are things you cannot understand. But today, they, you think, I'm not talking about just the word of God, by the way, today. You're going to, you're, there's something else. Then he said, like, <laughs> Oh, I first start the other side. Let's first go to Romans 10, 17. Let's first go to Romans 10, 17. Let's first go. Okay, read with me slowly. So then... 
Faith comes by comma and hearing by the word of Let's read it again slowly. So then faith comes by and hearing Okay. How does faith come? Faith doesn't come by hearing the word of God. How does faith come? How does faith come? And how does hearing come? How does hearing come? How does faith come? And how does hearing come? Do you remember the scriptures where Jesus says they have ears but they cannot hear? Okay, I'm going to ask two people. Past Dr. Okulo and Pastor Lynette, first come. Give them microphones, please. No, Dr. Okulo, and these are very brilliant people. I want you to remember that. Give them microphones. I hadn't prepared them, but they are ever ready. Oh, Tio. Can you clap for them? Turn on the microphones. Turn on your mic, Chom. <laughs> did you go to school? Yes, madam. What did you get in mathematics at A level? A. 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 For you, how many of you got A in math at A level? Not A for A. So you're clever. Yes. You're a clever girl. Yes. Are you a medical doctor? Yes, madam. Are you a specialist medical doctor? Yes, I am, madam. So you are clever. Very clever. Okay. <laughs> Faith comes how? But how does hearing come? Dr. Kulo, yes, I madam. want you to say a sentence in your local language. And you, do you have ears? Of course. You oh. confirm you have ears. So you can hear. Yes, madam. You are not deaf. Totally not. Okay, so even you, don't you have ears? So we are all sitting here hearing the word. We all have ears. Do you know that you can think you are hearing, but you're not hearing? Ah, ah, shoo, shoo. Doesn't she have ears? <laughs> Dr. Kulo, say a sentence in your local language. To her. To her, and she has to tell us what she has heard. As a poor and zoom Auntie, she has ears. Do you have ears? Yes, madam. What has he said? Interpret it for us. How, what have you heard? Nothing. <laughs> but how can you say you've heard nothing? <laughs> Dr. Okulo, maybe she didn't hear you properly. Say again what you said. Slowly. Say it slowly and loudly. Maybe it's the volume. I <laughs> <laughs> You don't know. I mean, basically, he can be here abusing you, yes. plotting to kill you, but you have ears. And he is smiling. You, you have ears, yes. Yes. But you cannot hear. Oh. Who here is understanding what Dr. Okulo is saying? Who come and tell us if you're there and you've understood? Run, 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 run. Don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pastor Ivan Obalo. Are you a medical doctor? So it's not because he's a doctor and you're a doctor. What has he said? That you see me here, hunger. I am, I am very hungry. <laughs> okay, okay, let me ask Pastor Ivan. You guys, keep quiet. <laughs> Pastor Ivan, how did you learn this language? Did you go to school to learn the language you've just interpreted? No, I didn't go to school to learn that language. Huh? I am a naturally by tribe. I am born a naturally, so. How did you learn it? Did your parents take you to a Choli school? No, 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 by hearing. Do you remember learning the language? Do you remember sitting down and going through the language bit by bit? No, I don't even remember. You found yourself speaking it. Yes, I did. Are there languages you don't understand? There are. Why don't you understand them? 
because I can't, I, I can't hear them. You, I would want, uh, Vera, do you have a Chinese text? Even if you get it from the internet, a random Chinese, you can go and sit, Pastor Ivan. Auntie, he's clever. <laughs> he's a medical doctor. How many of you here are, me are specialist medical doctors? Specialist, med there is not even another one. There is none in this congregation. This is, oh, okay, pa Pastor Ari in the spirit. Doctor wa Apostle. <laughs> Apostle specialist medical doctor is Pastor Ari. What a shocking shock. Yeah, some people. Hmm. Yeah. For you, if you, they don't think you are the doctor of their hearts, you, you'll be fine. Ambe Vieira has not found for me any Chinese text. Just go to Google and say Chinese text. Put it up. This man is clever. He went to school. Any time now. <laughs> wow. Just a picture. A picture of Chinese text. A picture. Say images. Put it up. Vera is there. Hope. Oh, I move on. There is hope. Okay. All right. All right. Maybe I didn't warn them. Some things come to you. So, what you do? What you do? Me, I even know that you've already understood. But I will still tell you something Whoa. extra. <laughs> because many of you have read this scripture to say, faith comes by hearing the word of God. Uh. That's not how faith comes. Your hearing affects your faith. Wow. The language you know, you learned by hearing. You lived in a home where they spoke a choli, and no one had to teach you. Somehow you interpreted because you heard and heard and heard and heard. Huh. It wasn't two days of hearing. It was months and years. Oh, Dr. Kulo. Aren't you a specialist medical doctor? Your brain you have. A brain no one here has done what you have done. Tell me what are those words. <laughs> Do you have eyes? I have eyes. Can I you can, see? I can see. Are you clever? I am clever. Did you pass? I pass. Are you a medical doctor? I'm a medical doctor. Are you doctor. a specialist? Specialist. Are you a scientist? Ooh. What are those words? I don't know. Go and sit down. There is a language in the spirit. You see, the language you know is an advantage in the realm that you operate in. If you're fluent in Luganda and you meet a person who can't understand Luganda, you have an advantage immediately over them. Because you can transact in that realm where that language is efficient. When you go with your fluent Luganda to France, you have no advantage. Not because you're not clever. Not because you're not good. But the language you have cannot help you transact in the realm you've entered. And therefore, your language that you're fluent in becomes a disadvantage in that realm. But you see, language is learned by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And hearing. If you get a newborn baby and put them in a French-speaking home for one year, they will speak fluent French. Because all the... And no one tells them this word means this. They just start to understand because you're wired that way. The things of the flesh teach us the things of the spirit. The man who hears the word and hears the... Not reads the word. Please understand. Remember, I'm the person who has written books on reading the word. Faith does not come by reading. Faith does not come by studying. Reading is important. But faith doesn't come. Now, the, in the spirit realm, you transact with faith. Faith is a currency. By grace... We've been saved through faith. Faith receives what has been given by grace. Apostle Lebad on Sunday to tell us that God has prepared things for us. But if we don't have the language, or if we are, some of you, did you do some French in school? I did some French. But can you survive for the life of you even for two minutes in France? Do you know why? You had it for a short time. If they had got you, instead of being in a classroom where you're reading French, if you went to France for exactly four months, you would learn French. By hearing. 
your mind just starts to interpret. That's the same for your spirit man. The more you hear, the more you understand the language of the spirit, the more you gain an, an advantage in the spirit, the more you transact in the spirit. The amount of hearing matters. Faith comes by hearing. One of Apostle's favorite scriptures, Isaiah 50 verse 4. The Lord God has given me the tongue of them. How does your tongue become land? You're going to see. That I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. How? He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens what? He awakens my what? To hear as the a land tongue is a result of a land ear. You will not command with your mouth what your ear has not heard. Worship harvest, God is calling us to have land ears. If I'm in a place where there are no Baganda and a Muganda starts to speak, if I'm in France, I will immediately interpret. There are things that someone will speak, like you saw here, Pastor Lynette, very clever. She could not understand anything. But someone could understand why they had been in a place for years where they had the language. Apostle will stand here and teach and we'll be hearing different things. Some of you will just be hearing gibberish gibberish other people will be completely understanding because they recognize that language we are all right now hearing differently because of what we've been hearing your hearing affects your hearing put back romans 10 17 if that's all i say i will go home how does faith come how does hearing come the devil doesn't want you to hear some of you are offended when they send you teach audios of someone's. We have things to do. We have things to do. That's why there are things you cannot understand in the realm of the spirit. That's why you cannot transact certain things in the realm of the spirit. When your hearing is limited, your fruit is instantly limited. There are battles you will never win. Because you can't hear. There is a hearing of the spirit. There is such a thing as a land ear. The more you hear, the more you hear. Have you understood? The more you hear, the better you hear. The more you hear, the clearer you hear. If you get that child who has been in an environment, a baby for a few months and you take them out. I remember when we were young, we, spoke, we only spoke English. Because we lived in Kampala. When my, when my father died, they moved us to the village. My little brother then started, he was about four years old at that point, had to unlearn English. He couldn't understand Runyankole for months. He was so frustrated trying to communicate with people who can't speak English. After a few months, he could not understand English. Because he was no longer hearing it. He now couldn't. He had to be taken to school to learn English, the very language he understood. Some of you, there was a time you used to hear the word so much. And so the language had started to become clear. Then you moved away. Now spiritual things are strange to you. The solution is simple. Get into a space again of what? And, and, and. You hear until you start to see. Let's not be the people who hear the sermon on Sunday. You play that sermon. You play that someone. You play that someone. Because you know what? As you're hearing the language of the spirit of that teaching and its fruit is becoming clearer to your spirit man. And just as day and night are assured, oh, seed, time, and harvest are assured. Your understanding. Why is the devil after your hearing? Because the devil knows that faith does not come until you hear. The Bible says faith comes. You're not born with faith. If I say the car is coming, doesn't it mean that it's not yet there where it is? 
faith comes. Where there is no faith, it hasn't yet come. You don't need to pray about it. You need to hear because faith only comes by hearing. There are things you're so sure about in your life because you've heard them over and over and over. Some of them are bad things. And the only way to displace them is by hearing something opposite. Let me tell you something. The things you hear are not innocent. Faith is coming. But what kind of faith is coming? Faith comes. Faith comes. That is an encouraging thing. Faith comes. If you have little, if the faith feels like it's little, faith comes. Faith comes. It comes. It's assured. Faith comes by one thing. How does faith come? Worship harvest. How does faith come? Not by reading. Not by praying. Not by fasting. Not by crying. Not by honor. Those are different keys for different things. Don't confuse it. Faith comes by hearing. But how does hearing come? Have you understood that you can have ears and you're not hearing? So when you listen to someone and you don't understand it, what do you do? You throw it away. You say, hey, you wait. You hear it again. You hear it again. You hear it again because it means something is hidden to you. If you don't understand the language, you stay in the place where they are speaking it. First you speak and they laugh at you. And you speak again and they laugh at you. Then you start to get better. Then you start to get better. In a matter of time, you're fluent and you're teaching others. That's the same thing for you in the place of the spirit. You just need to keep hearing and hearing and hearing. And then it starts to manifest. How the seed works, we don't know. But hearing comes by the word of God. The word of God opens our ears to hear the things of the spirit. The word of God is what opens the ear. It makes it the ear of the land. That's why he opens the ear of the land that he may speak. For you preachers, if you want to preach better, listen more. Yeah. It's not in the reading. The reading is for being established. But the ministry comes by hearing. The revelation comes by hearing. The things you hear are not innocent. Everything you consistently hear in large measure becomes a seed that produces fruit. Wow, 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 wow. Maybe let us some. I'm not even going, going, going to go into the other scripture of Mark for where I was because you know it. Because how the seed is sown is by hearing. That this is the one which is sown when they hear. Sown when they hear. Sown when they hear. All the grounds are they hear. They all hear. But the last ground is different. It produces fruit because it's the kind which has more of the word and less of the world. The other one has cares of this world. You're there. Everything you're hearing is how the economy is down. How people are dying. Have you noticed you get pregnant, you start hearing stories of women who are miscarrying. Stories of women who had over what? You get a baby, you hear babies are, someone, their baby died in the court. This one, their baby died of an infection. Why is it that suddenly when you, or you get a business, you start hearing bad stories. Why? The enemy knows that if he's in your ear, he's going to, he's going to stop your harvest. What you hear is not innocent. Those songs you're hearing that have too much sexual connotation. Then you'll be there in the, in, during the day and you find yourself struggling with sexual thoughts because you've been planting sexual seeds through music that you say is innocent. It's not. These are windows. These are windows. These are windows. There are things you've heard about marriage that you've believed. There are things you've heard about sexuality that you've believed but now you need to hear what God says about those things and keep hearing where you're struggling maybe you lived a certain life for a while get into a space where you hear certain teachings until you, you can't understand the other stuff anymore until it becomes strange to you you had our sister testifying yesterday about addictions she just sat where the word was being taught she didn't even remember some of the people we went where, about who is doing what I was there and I'm sure in her heart she was like, why is this thing working? Without rehab, without anything, an addiction left why?
if the devil stops you from hearing the word, he has robbed you of your fruit. Let's read Mark 4, 23 to 25 towards the end. Together. If anyone has ears to hear, let him do what? Ah, uh-uh, first step over there. If any, do you have ears? Touch them and I see. Do you have ears? What does the scripture say your ears are for? Their ears to do what? What's the use of your ears? What's the use of your ears? He says, if anyone has ears, which are for what? Let him do what? Tell your ears, say, hear. Yo, guys, these ears from today, realize that they are a portal for fruitfulness. If from today, in the morning, for us, when you're in the bathroom bathing, you're playing a someone. In the car, you're playing a someone. Throw away radio from your car. Why do you want to hear the news? Reports of things that have happened on the earth when God can show you what has come in the spirit. Me, I don't know any radio for years now. I don't, genuinely. I don't even think I have car radio. I don't know what a radio sounds like. You listen in the shower. You listen, you listen in, in the car. You listen, you buy, buy things for blocking in the taxi. Why should you be listening to strange music in the taxi? Even on your border, border, put plug the ear, say you ears. I have ears to hear and I'm going to do what? Let him who has ears to do what? Let him hear. In other words, that it is a decision to hear. Just because you have ears doesn't mean you're going to hear. He says your ears are for hearing. Now please hear. And this is after he talks about the seed and the harvest, the fruitfulness of the word of God. He says, let him who has ears to hear, hear. Then the next verse, what does he say? Then he said to them together, take heed what you worship harvest. Take heed what you hear. Did you know that there are certain crops which choke other crops? If you do mixed farming, there are some things which go in the ground and kill nutrients for another seed. So if you have seven teachers, one says, honor your father and mother. Another one says, hate your father and mother. Another one says, it depends. Another one says, which one? I, what are you hearing? You have a confused language. And therefore, confused seed. Sometimes you're victorious, sometimes you're not. He says, take heed. That is a warning. Be careful what you hear. God gives us shepherds after his own heart to feed us with what? Knowledge and understanding. In his wisdom, he has given us shepherds. Can we trust that he will bring the fruit through the shepherds? I'm not saying you can never listen to anyone. You know what I'm saying. Because if it's in the ground, it means it has now been planted deep. Hmm? Take heed what you hear. Not only teachings, the stuff you hear, the conversations you sit in and are a part of over and over. Take heed, it's never innocent. And then what does he say? He says a thing about a measure. He says with the same what? Someone say measure matters. Munange, the amount of hearing matters because the more you hear, the more you hear. Even the bad stuff, the more you hear it, the more you hear it. You start to see, we can be here and all of us are seeing different things because of our capacity of what we've heard. Someone says one word, you hear three things. Ah, they are attacking me. Yes. Someone is feeling encouraged, another one is feeling attacked. Because of what they've been hearing. So he says, take it what you hear. Why? With the same, what's that coward? Shout it out. Measure. Measure has to do with amount. Someone say, amount matters. Oh yes, amount matters in the things of hearing. He says, can you imagine that there is a measure of what you hear? With the same measure you use. Hearing is using. With the same measure you use together, uh it will be measured. And to you who hear, what will happen? More will be my goodness the more you hear the more you're given the more you hear the more the fruit the more you hear the more you're given don't worry about how it works we don't know he says you sleep the one who sows sleeps and wakes up how it grows they don't know you sow you sow 
You sow the sower, sows the word, the sower hears and hears and hears. Then when the fruit comes, it will be evident. Hearing is private, but fruit is public. Verse 25. For whoever has, in other words, hearing is having. All this is talking about hearing, by the way. Whoever what? Has. To him, more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has, will be taken away from. This has nothing to do with finances. It's talking about your hearing. The one who has more hearing, more will be given. More hearing will be given, more fruit will be given. The one who does not hear, who hears once in a while, even the little fruit. Because we all talked about an acre of land with three seeds. It is as good as planting nothing. If you went to that garden, an acre of land with three seeds, would you say they've planted maize? You'd say this place has weeds. Genuinely, you wouldn't even notice the maize. That's how some of our lives are. You can't notice the good fruit of the, of the, of the word of God because the weeds abound. Say, far from me. In whose power is the hearing? In whose power is the measure of hearing? It's so easy. Just go, get the sermon, play it, put it in your ears. That's how you hear. It's really, you don't need to be, there's, not, there's no feeling about it. There's no sensation about it. You just, the ears, for them, they will hear. They are innocent. They will hear what you let them hear. The more you hear, the more you hear. God wants to wake our ear up. If your ear isn't open, you can hear the word and not hear it. You saw it here. Pastor Lynette could not understand. Why? She has not heard that language. If I ask her now, what did the words he said? Can you repeat them to me? You can't. Because even though he said them to you three times, you know those things when you're learning a language, you say, how do they say it in Kiswahili again? They've told it to you five times. Why? You've only heard it five times. That's why you have to keep, what, what, what is it again? That's why you have to say, eh, what is that? Give me some scriptures for peace. Which talk about peace. To be the key. The measure you use to hear determines what you will be given. Oh, let me tell you something. As I close. Luke 4, 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to do what? God anoints our teachers and shepherds to do what? To preach the gospel to who? When God wants to send poverty out of your life, what does he send you? A preacher. And what do you need to do? Hear the preacher. Poverty will go. The more you hear, poverty flees. Because weeds get out and then the seed gets in and releases the harvest of prosperity. When you're poor, God sends you a preacher. Can you imagine that? A preacher for a poor man? You're like, no, please send some aid. Send some grants. No. The solution is a preacher. The solution is in the ears. He says he has anointed him to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent him to heal the brokenhearted. If your heart is broken, the more you hear the word of God, you're healed. You proclaim liberty to people who are captives, the limited ones, the ones who have limited progress in their lives. Everywhere where there is bondage in your life or limitation, God has sent you a preacher to proclaim, you open your ears to your teachers. Worship harvest. To proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Even liberty for those who are oppressed is by the word of God being heard, not read. Hard. Increase your hearing more than what you're reading. Because faith comes by. Faith comes by. And how does hearing come? When God will bring you freedom, he sends you a preacher. When God will bring you healing, he sends you a preacher. When God will release you from captivity, he sends you a preacher. When God will release you into new dimensions, he sends you a preacher. When God wants to take you higher, he sends you a preacher. What you are full of is what will dominate your life. What you are full of is what will dominate your life. Not what you hear once in a while, but what you hear and hear and hear and hear and hear. 
there is no shortcut to fruitfulness. Just like there is no shortcut to day and night. Here and here and here and here until you understand the language. Until you see the fruit of what you're hearing. Because be sure faith comes. Faith comes to the hearer. Faith comes and faith comes by hearing and hearing awakens our ears. It's time to get saturated with the word of God. It's time to know what's yours and know it more than you know what is in the world. It's time to become an expert in the language of faith. And you become an expert in the language of faith by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. Because what you hear and hear and hear, you produce after. It is guaranteed. It is set as a law in the spirit. The way you know there is day and night. If you hear and hear and hear, you will start to see fruit and fruit and fruit and fruit. It's time to be dominated by the word of the Lord. Amen. Why don't we get up on our feet right now? Just open your mouth right now and in the realm of the spirit, start to speak. Pray in tongues, pray with understanding. And if you're here today, oh, and you've never, go, go, go on and pray. And you've never met Jesus, Lord of your life. Faith for salvation comes by hearing. God wants to set you free. God wants to give you a new life. Even those who get born again, get born again by hearing the preacher. If you're here and you've never met Jesus, Lord of your life, I want you to put your hand up quickly and boldly and say, today I want to make Jesus Lord of my life. I want to have a new life. I want to have a new beginning. I want freedom from any bondage that I carry. If that is you, just put your hand up. I know it's a prayer meeting, but maybe a friend brought you. Put your hand up boldly. I see those hands. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Thank you, Jesus. Put up that hand boldly and courageously. Neighbor, bring that young man. Bring that young woman. As you pray in the spirit, we are fighting for souls. Walk with them. Come on, put your hand up. Don't be afraid. Be bold. You are courageous. You are bold. God is rescuing you. God is giving you a new beginning. Put your hand up boldly if you're saying yes to Jesus. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Welcome, my brother. Hallelujah. Church, pray. Put your hand up boldly if that is you today. Welcome, my brother. Welcome, welcome. Freedom is here. Oh, yes, Victor is here. I know there's still some people. Don't say I'll get saved quietly. Put that hand up. Put that hand up boldly and courageously. Don't allow fear to stop you at every place where we are meeting online. This is the day of your salvation. God sent me today to deliver you from the prison of sin, from the prison of an early death. Oh yes, our God is a God of love. He has good plans for your life. Look, there is no loss in knowing Jesus. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And he wants to give you a new beginning. I know you're there. Just put your hand up. That's all you need to do. Look, all you need to do is raise that hand. It's in your power. And break free from every bondage of the enemy. From the world and its limitations. And embrace your father. Are you there? Just put your hand up. Where are you? I know you're there. Can you ask your neighbor for me? Say, can I walk with you? Are you born again? And please don't refuse to tell your neighbor. They need to hear. They need to hear. And then walk with them if they say, I'm scared. Just say, come on, let's go. Let's go. It takes courage to put that hand up. It takes courage to walk forward. Everywhere, everywhere. Do it, do it, do it. Is anyone coming with a neighbor? Are there some evangelists in the house? Oh yes, oh yes. Lord, we thank you that you open our ears today. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate these souls? These young men and women online and in the room. Wow. Welcome to the family of God. Wow. This is the best time to get born again. At a prayer meeting. My God. These ones are marked. And now my brothers, just pray this simple prayer after me. I want you to join them so that they don't feel alone. Say, Lord Jesus. Oh, is there? Oh, yes. There's a sister. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Woohoo! Welcome to the family of God. Come on, pray this simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus today, today I receive you, I receive 
as my Lord and as my Savior. From today, you will dominate my life. I am yours and yours alone. Today, I am no longer under the influence of the devil. God, you are my father. I am your child. From today, I am born again. I am a child of God. I will never be the same again. I am free from sin and every principality of darkness. I will never go back. I will never go back. I will only move forward until I meet Jesus. In Jesus' name, come on, church. Woohoo!